the 93. We're going to try to sing Hark the Herald Angels. Acapella, you're going to have to help me now. 93, when you find your place, why well, stand with me and sing out. Like I said before, just imagine there's snow flowing and you're out in front of somebody's house you like. And if you don't like them, sing bad. If you do like them, sing good. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> well, are you ready? Here we go now. Hark the herald angels sing, glory to the newborn king. Peace on earth and mercy mild, God and sinners reconciled. Joyful all ye nations ride, join the triumph of the sky. With the angels proclaim, Christ is born in Bethlehem. Hark the herald angels sing, glory to the newborn King. Christ by heaven on the door, Christ the everlasting Lord. Late in time, behold him come, offspring of a virgin's womb. Veiled in flesh, the God and sea, hail the incarnate deity. Please as man with man to dwell, Jesus our Emmanuel. Hark the herald angels sing, glory to the newborn King. Hail the heaven-born Prince of Peace. Hail the Son of Righteousness. Light and life to him he brings. Risen with healing in his wings. Mild he lays his glory by. Born that man no more may die. Born to raise the sons of earth. Born to give them second birth. Oh, hark the herald angels sing, Glory to the newborn King. Oh, come, desire of nations, come, Fix in us thy humble home. Rise the woman's conquering sea, Bruise in us the serpent's head. Adam's likeness now efface. Stamp thine image in its place. Second Adam from above. Reinstate us in thy love. Oh, hark the herald angels sing. Glory to the newborn king. Thank you. Then they that gladly feared the Lord spake often one to another. And the Lord hearkened and heard it. And a book of remembrance was written before him for them that feared the Lord. And that thought upon his name. And they shall be mine, saith the Lord of hosts, in that day when I make up my jewels, I will spare them. As a man spareth his own son that serveth him. Then shall you return and discern between the righteous and the wicked, between him that serveth God and them, him that serveth him not. Amen, church. What a powerful passage of scripture out of Malachi, chapter number 3, verses 16 through 18. The Lord hearkens and hears when we talk about him this day. And he even created a special book for those that do that, according to his holy word. And he says that, We'll come back to this earth. And when we come back to this earth, it's not going to be grace anymore. Right. It's going to be a time of judgment. He says that we are going to help separate those that serve him and those that serve him not. Amen. Amen. Before we go to the Lord in prayer, I want to tell you that many of us have a have the world stuck to us this morning, and we say, well, we hope this is going to be a better year. 
We look forward to this being a better year. It's not going to be. I'm going to tell you it's not going to be a better year. And uh, I'm going to tell you that I'm going to do all I can as your pastor to get you to understand that we have the script that men are going to wax worse and worse and evil is going to wax. And, and our persecution that's when we serve the Lord is going to get worse and worse. Yeah. And it is. And it is. And, but the wonderful thing is, he said he's going to spare us from the worst part of all that, isn't he? Amen. And what a, what, a, what a blessing that is to you and I this morning. If you've looked at the sign on your way in this morning, if you looked at the inside of your bulletin this morning for the year 2023, our theme is Christ before me in 2023. Amen. Amen. That's a choice. That's a choice that's optional to each and every one of us. Let's go to Lord in prayer this morning. Our precious Heavenly Father, Lord God, it's good to see the saints of God in the house today. It's great to be with one another. It's great to be able to talk amongst our brethren about our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It's great to exalt our Savior's holy name. Now, Lord God, as we come together this morning, we pray that you are busy today. We keep you busy with a sweet smelling savor. We pray that you keep you busy writing those names in that book of remembrance of who was talking about you amongst themselves. Who come to the house of God to praise their savior today and those who come to serve. Lord, we thank you for all of the opportunities. We thank you, Lord, that, that we are invincible in this life until you say otherwise. Uh, the aches and pains, they go with the sin. They go with the, the old sin flesh in the body. We know that. But, Lord, we have a hope that's out of this world. And it's gonna t- you're gonna, you keep us out of this world even while we're here, Lord, through your Holy Spirit. May we attain this today. May we understand this today. And may we live by it today. Be with those that are sick and shut in that cannot be with us. Be with all those on our prayer list, Lord. In the precious name of Christ, I pray. And all God's people said. Amen. You can say good morning. Thank you. Now allow me to back up with scripture, something that I just said to you. I now will read to you out of uh, 2 Timothy chapter number 3, verse number 12. Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. That's a guarantee, isn't it? So if you're planning on having a better year this year, uh, you might want to weigh that out. (laughs) But evil men and seducers... Anybody know what a seducer is? They seduce you away from something, don't they? What do you suppose the child of Christ is going to be seduced away from in 2023? Yeah, the word of God, serving God and and being, being loving on him. They're going to be seduced away from that. Even worse than in 2022. I have the authority right before my very eyes. So, but evil men and and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and has been assured of. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right. I'll share some announcements with you this morning. Good to see you all. And on that note, Happy New Year. (laughs) And uh, uh, remember, we will not have an evening service tonight. And so you can stay home and get indigestion from all that sauerkraut you're going to eat and, uh, and uh, not feel well later on tonight. And, uh, I, you know, I'm, I'm only giving, stating the experience I'm probably going to have. So uh, misery loves company, right? Um, we, in our officers meeting, we met, we prayed, we nominated and, um, uh, uh, our business meeting is coming up next Sunday night for members only, and um, Brother Ed Dowling accepts the board's nomination for the position of deacon, and you all will be, vo- members will vote on that during the business meeting. And uh, Deacon John Hughes accepts the board's nomination for the position of trustee. He will also continue to be a deacon. He'll wear two hats. 
And uh, we got to get our money's worth out of him because he's only 39. Uh, and uh, again, our annual church business meeting for church members only is scheduled for Sunday, January 8th, following the evening service. That's next week. Uh, the release time program for the schools uh, group meets in the fellowship hall on January 10th at 11. That's Tuesday. And then again at the Historical Society on January 17th at 10 a.m. So if you're participating in that, put that on your calendars. And uh, we also have the Missions Committee this coming Tuesday, January 3rd at 9 a.m. in the Fellowship Hall. And the Ladies of Faith will meet on Saturday, January 14th and the 21st. Is that right? Okay. And the 21st at 9.30 a.m. You bunch of party animals. Yeah, all right, all right. I believe that's all the announcements that I have this morning. Our scripture reading is by Brother Ed Dallin. Good morning, everyone. Happy New Year. I am reading three verses from Jeremiah chapter 29. I'm going to start with uh, verse 11 through 13. For I know thy thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace not a, and not of evil, to give you an expected end. Then shall ye call upon me, and, and ye shall go and pray unto me, and I will hearken unto you. And ye shall seek me and find me, when ye shall search for me with all of your heart." As I look over the last year, I kind of thought, well, my goal for last year, I wanted to be a blessing. I wanted to be, be a blessing to people around me, and I, I hope that I have been in some way or another. And that's what my prayer, my goal is again for next year, that I can, you know, be a blessing. It says friends sharpen each other, and we make each other better. And uh, that's what I want to do. We should, we should all be better off for being around each other, right? And I hope that's, and if I don't do that, then please forgive me. But my goal is, but it doesn't always come out the way you want it, you know. But to be a blessing to each other, you know, to be able to say it was good to be in the house of the Lord. Not only to, to open the word and sing, but to be around each other and to rub on each other and, and sharpen each other and, and, you know, just to go away and say, huh, I feel better and I want to be here next time. So thank you for that. So, hey, how about what child is this? Number 94. 94. It's only got three verses. So. <laughs> 94. Stand with me. Stand with me. You ready? Here we go now. What child is this who lay to rest on Mary's lap? Happy is sleeping, whom angels greet with anthem sweet. It was shepherds, watch our keeping. This, this is Christ. The King, in good shepherds, God, heard an angel sing. Haste, haste to bring him, law, the bay, the son of Mary. Why lies he in such mean estate where ox and ass are feeding? Good Christian fear for sinners here, for the silent word is pleading. This, this is Christ the King, in whom shepherds God and angels sing. Haste, haste to bring him law of the babe, the son of Mary. So bring him incense, gold and myrrh, or come rich and poor to own him. The king 
of King's salvation bring. Let loving heart enthrone him. For oh, this, this is Christ the King, whom shepherds guard and angels sing. Haste, haste to bring him, Lord, the Bay, the Son of Mary. Thank you. Amen. Brother Dave Wilkes, would you lead us in prayer for the offering this first Sunday of the New Year? faithfulness of Sister Betty. Amen. 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 Norma, you can sing a little longer today if you'd like. See, Christ before me in 2023, what I was pondering was done by one. <laughs> Come minister in song to us. Good morning. <clears throat> Master, Redeemer, Savior of the world, wonderful. Counselor, bright morning star, the lily of the valley, provider and friend, he was yesterday, he'll be today. 
tomorrow, the beginning and the end. But the angels call him Jesus, born of a virgin. And Mary called him Jesus, oh, but I call him Lord. called him Jesus, born of a virgin, and Mary called him Jesus, oh, but I Yes, the angels called him Yahshua, born of a virgin, and Mary called him Yahshua, oh, but I Thank you for the blessing, sis. Thank you. Thank you. I hope you get that theme, Christ before me, in 2023. I'm not talking about him walking before me. I'm talking about the choice of everyday life, of putting Christ before me. That's a love, isn't it? You know... Um, my bride and I, were coming up here in January, is going to be 49 years of marriage for us. And, uh, oh, that's, that's okay. We haven't made it yet. <laughs> but, 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 but even, I mean, to this day, if there's one something left in the house and one of us or both of us have a desire for it and go for it, we always go to the other to see 
Do you want this? You see, that's putting someone before me. Amen? And she does that, and I do that, and sometimes it ends up we have to split it. Right? <laughs> but the thought's there, right? Yeah. And, and that's a good thing. You remember the cartoon in the paper, Love Is? Uh, and you'd see those little cartoons. And, and, you know, love also is in a marriage, in a marriage with a husband and wife. We all know this. Sometimes as the, one of the spouses have to tolerate something that's going to bring comfort and peace to the other one that you really don't want to deal with. But, and that's, that's, a, that's sacrificing out of the love Right for your husband or for your wife, and but that's 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 a picture of love and all of those simple little illustrations I've given you here today, and uh, you know we we're very much comforted by the love that we receive from Jesus Christ Amen. as as His children. So on that note, I'm going to ask you if you would turn in your Bibles to John chapter number 14 with me this morning. John chapter 14. I don't know if you all got it when I said I was entertaining the theme done by one. I meant 1 p.m. in 2023. And uh, some of you got really scared about that. Started looking for another church. <laughs> that doesn't mean I wouldn't take you to one if the Lord wanted me to. So you can don't give up that fear. Just, just hold it in obeyance there. John chapter number 14, verse number 16, uh, Jesus says some special words here. He says, I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever, forever. Even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive. Because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but you know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. You know, I don't have to run around be behind my wife trying to make her comfortable all the time. And nor does she have to do that with me. But we're both there for each other in a time that we need comforted. Amen? Amen. I don't always need comforted. I'm not, I, I don't like to think of myself as a high-maintenance little crybaby. But there are times I need that comforter. Absolutely. And there's times that, that no, no person, including her, can give me that comfort. I need from the great comforter. Amen. Amen. And I know you're the same way this morning. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, uh, Lord God, we trust this morning through your Holy Spirit, the great comforter, another comforter, that... We will understand what you are saying to us uh, through your holy word this day. Blessed in a mighty way, uh, planted in our hearts, may we leave this house better for you this day in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So love is always, always putting one first. You'll notice in the, in the verse just before this, in verse number 15, he says, if ye what, church? If you love me. So we, there's an if. And then there's that love thing. If you love me, keep my commandments. So it's kind of a test for us, um, especially in this day and age, it's a test for us. We enter into this brand, brand new year. Uh, some of us will make New Year's resolutions. We're going to get some of those pounds off of us. We're going to do this. And you know what? I'm not against New Year's resolutions. Uh, it's, it's worth a try. Amen? <laughs> uh, but, but the New Year's resolution in the spirit that I would love for all of us to have is Christ before me in 2023. He could, uh, we put him first before everything in our life. And uh, you've done that on this Lord's Day. This is the first day of the week. You're in God's house. This is the first Lord's Sunday of the year. You're in God's house. You've given him the first fruits of your year. Why mess it up, right? Just keep it going now. The pump's primed. And, uh, I, you know, I've always, I've always found it uh, somewhat exciting to uh, uh, pull down the curtain on the old year, no matter what was good, what was bad, or indifferent. Just pull down the curtain on the old year and just start peeking through, pull back the curtain a little bit on the new year. Uh, you know, I don't, uh, I don't really 
you, staying up late, it, <laughs> midnight, you know, late, <laughs> wa you know, watching all the, the drunken revelry on TV. I was sharing this with Brother Wilkes when we were standing outside between Sunday school and church. It reminds me of the days that I used to have to go from bar fight to this to that and roll around with the drunks and, you know, and then try to make it by a pay phone. Remember those things, folks? Oh, yeah. And, uh, you know, you would and, and, and get to a pay phone in my cruiser and call home to wish my wife and kids Happy New Year, you know, at 1230 or whenever. But uh, so uh, that doesn't excite me. I just go to bed and then wait for somebody to text me at 12.05. <laughs> I love it, though. That was nice. <laughs> that was nice. But I, but, <laughs> no, that's fine. That's fine. Sleep is nothing more than tiny snatches of death. Uh, but I've always found it somewhat exciting to do that, to be able to just, you know, that's all we can do this morning. This is the first day of the new year. We can pull the curtain back a little bit and just take a glimpse forward. Eh, what do we think is going to be there? We have no idea, do we? None whatsoever. We have no idea. But we do know something. Our Lord's already at tomorrow. Amen. He's already there. He already knows where he's going to send you and I. He already knows he's going to be with us as long as we're on his path. Amen. We know that. And that's a comfort to me today. I want it to be a comfort to you as well. Um, we look ahead. We do so with much uncertainty. We don't know what the new year is going to bring for any of us. Who who. You all might be burying me this year. Who knows? We just don't. Uh, we don't know. Much uncertainty. But with a faithful trust that God is already there, we can have that uncertainty. And we can perhaps changes that, 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 that lie ahead of us, uh, they're going to rattle our comfort zone a little bit. And we're going to need that comforter that's spoken of here in the Holy Scriptures. We're going to need that comforter. Uh, you notice he says, if ye love me. And then we know that when we go to, and hold yourself there in John 14, but go over and look at a very familiar verse with us in Romans 8.28. Romans 8.28, I just want your eyes to see that this first Sunday of the new year. In Romans 8, 28, and we know that, and here, here's, our, here's a comfort zone for us coming into 23, pulling that curtain back a little bit, is that we know that all things work together for good to them that love God. There's that word love again. To them that love God. All, we know that um, those things will work together to the good for us that love God. And we also know that um, to them who are called according to his what? Yeah, we need to be in his purpose, okay? We have to, be, we have to love God plus be in his purpose um, to do that. But what we keep seeing is there's that issue of love. And in, love means putting Christ before me. That's, that, that's, that's, that's what it's all about. Uh, uh, you know, Kim, when you want to show your love to Billy, you'll put him first. Billy, when you want to show your love to Kim, you put her first. When I want to show my love to you guys, I'll put you first. Um, and, and on and on. We always put that person that we're showing love to us first. And didn't Jesus do that for us? Amen. I mean, he gave us the greatest example there. He really did. So, you know, his disciples were, were truly, I believe, rattled. I think rattled is a, is a good word to say. They were pretty rattled over the thought of facing a future without the comfort of his presence with them. They were, I mean, think about what they, what, what they did. They learned from him. They sat at his feet. They followed him. They, he got them out of trouble. He, he intervened in the messes that they created. Um, so he, he was quite a comfort to them, as he is to us. Uh, and... and they were pretty rattled over the thought of losing the comfort of his companionship and him being in their midst. And, and Jesus sought to calm them. These passages of scriptures is just what he's doing. He's seeking to calm them in their fears and to challenge them to a faithfulness uh, with the promise of another comforter. Uh, at the end of Jesus' 
earthly ministry of building the church, he went on to heaven. And he continues to build that church from heaven through the, through the comforter, through the Holy Spirit of God and, and his loyal and faithful servants. And, it, and so at the end of that, he spent much, much time in seclusion with his disciples. They needed comforted. And, and this was something new to them. We look back at this. We have God's mind here before us. They didn't have that. They had God in the flesh with them. Uh, and so they were learning by the moment, by the moment. We always have an opportunity to go back and try it again. Amen? Uh, they didn't have that like we do. So, so much, um, there was much time in seclusion with his disciples because he wanted to strengthen them for the tasks that lie before them. And that task was the Great Commission. And uh, I'm not going to look that up. I think you all know what that is. You've heard it enough in the church that you should know. But he gave them an exceedingly great and precious promise Precious promise. Look at John chapter 14, verse 1 through 3 with me. He says, let, your heart, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. He's, he, he's bringing comfort to them. In, in a time that they're like, oh, but we're going to lose, we're going to lose this person, we're going to lose that. I think of it this way: Look at the loved ones we've lost in the last several years out of this church family that have gone home to be with the Lord. That we know where they're at, Amen. you know, and and <clears throat> you know, we know that that we love them so much that it kind of felt like our heart got stomped on. But the comfort is this: <laughs> I'm going to be with them for eternity. That's the comfort. That's the comfort. This, this is, you know, this ain't, ain't, I don't care how many fat ladies sing. This ain't over when the fat lady sings. It's never going to be over for me. Okay? This life, this isn't where it ends. And, and, I, and I've assured you from the word of God, remember that, folks, when we draw the very, the, the very last breath present with the Lord. We don't even taste that death. Don't be afraid of death. We don't even taste that stuff. Oh, everybody's sitting around our bedside. Oh, poor Bobby. <laughs> poor Harold. No, oh, don't poor us. Well, you know, Elvis didn't just leave the building. <laughs> he's, he's gone to be with the Lord Jesus Christ. That's where I'm at. And so it's not over here. We have that comfort to know that. No matter how much men wax worse and worse, no matter what this screwed up government does, no matter what, do what you want to do because you're just a temporary hemorrhoid. <laughs> That's all you are. you just temporary, okay? <laughs> uh, you just, you just, it's just temporary. <laughs> I wasn't calling you guys that. I was calling our government that. Oh, 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 oh we got it clear. Did you get it? I'm calling the government okay. that. That's, it's just, they, they're temporary. You know, you, know, you know, the words that are written in our nation's capital all over the buildings, the Holy Scripture, those are forever. They're going to stay right here through the tribulation hour. They're going to stay right here through the thousand-year reign in the millennial kingdom, and they're still going to be here when the new holy Jerusalem comes down. They're still going to be here then. They can't, they can't get rid of it. You can't acid wash them. They're not going to go anywhere. They're going to stay right here, because they were tried and proven in a furnace of earth, and they're going to stay right here. Amen? Amen. Amen. Yeah. So, you know, all, you know, that, the stack of papers the president wants to sign, and, and, and all the abortions and baby kill, yeah, but those people are temporary. Yes, they are. They're temporary. This isn't, we're not temporary. We are not temporary. And our comforter assures of, uh, us of that. And neither is his comfort temporary. His comfort's for all of eternity. 
That's the comforter we look for in another comforter today, that love that we see in Jesus Christ. Would you look at uh, verse number 11 here in chapter 14? He says, believe me that I am in the Father and the Father in me, or else believe me for the very work's sake. He's, tell, he's, he's bringing that comfort to his disciples. Listen, you've seen what I've done. Yeah. Believe who I am. You've seen what I've done. Believe who I am. He's trying to comfort them uh, when he talks about this comforter that he's going to bring them. We see in verse number 12, he says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also. Now think about that. Jesus, what did he do? He, he was spreading the gospel. Isn't that what we do? We do the same thing. Except, 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 he says, and greater works than these shall he do because I go unto my Father. We're going to do even greater works because he went unto his Father. Amen. And well, well, well how, how does that make me do greater works? Because when he gives me his Holy Spirit and fills me with the Holy Spirit of God, you can't help but to do greater works. Can't help but to do greater works. That's a pretty neat thing there. We see... Um, uh, in, in, in verse 13, and whatsoever you shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If, she, if you shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. Amen. That's, that's a great comfort. That's a great comfort. Now, he's not talking about, if, you know, asking for something for my good and for my edification. But how about asking something to facilitate the kingdom of God right. here on earth? And you're willing to go and you're willing to do it. He's going to answer that because that's his will. Amen. That's his will. It's a wonderful comforter that he's given them and he's given us. He promised another comforter in verse 16. Again, as we look at that one again, we see, and I will pray the Father and he shall give you another comforter. You see, Jesus is the comforter with them at the time, but he's going to give them another comforter, which is the Holy Spirit that he promised them. In verse number 18, he follows up in verse number 18 with them to say, I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. I will come to you. Then he, then uh, they're incapable of understanding this at the time. They don't get this like we do. But notice in verse 28, ye have heard how I said unto you, I go away and come again unto you. And well, look at this again. If ye what? Loved me. loved me. If you loved me. And there's that if and there's that word love again. Um, and, and that's why I say Christ before me in 2023. I love him before I love me. That's true love. That's a true loving. And, and you notice that's what's attached to every one of those ifs. Yes. If we want to be comforted by the Lord, we need to be loving on him. And he's going to love on us right back, isn't he, church? If you've loved on the Lord, you know he'll love on you right back. Uh, you know that. And... and you know, Jesus' call uh, via the Holy Spirit, even today, Jesus' call via the Holy Spirit is the same as his call was during his earthly ministry. You're in the book of John. Would you go over to chapter number one in the book of John for me? Chapter number one. There's a, there's a three-step formula here that hasn't changed since Jesus' earthly ministry. It's still going on through the Holy Spirit of God uh, with his servants. It's still coming down from heaven. In verse number 43, we see the day following Jesus would go into Galilee. And what does the scripture say he did? He findeth Philip. He findeth Philip. Now, the Holy Spirit today, the comforter, is in this house and he's in this house to find the one that doesn't possess him. Amen? Amen. He's in this house to find the one. And he, do, he don't have to look hard. He knows who you are. Right. And, and you get this little, you don't hear it, but you get that still, quiet.
quiet voice of the Holy Spirit knocking on your heart's door, trying to testify of Jesus to you, trying to show you that he wants to love you. He wants you to love him so he can love on you and, and be that comforter in the re for you for all of eternity for the rest of your life to meet all those things that we've spoken of earlier. He said he wants to send that other comforter we see here in verse number 43, the day following Jesus would go into Galilee, he findeth Philip. And when he finds him, here's what he says to Philip, follow me, follow me. And you all know, every single one of us that are truly blood-washed, born-again believers in Jesus Christ, the true ones who really are, you know that's exactly what he did to you. He found you. You didn't find him. He, he, you were in a situation in life. He put the word of God before you through some big mouth preacher. He did something and, and he found you. He found you. And then when he found you, he, he told you through the Holy Spirit of God and knocking on your heart's door, follow me. Follow me. And then you either rejected him or you said, yes, I will. I will follow him. Now just... Be careful now. Just because you believe on the name of Jesus doesn't mean that you followed him, okay? But there's people that's believing on the name of Jesus all their life and they're going to hell. You got to follow him. You got to follow him. It's a must that we follow him. And then when we follow him, guess what else that we do? Uh, it, here's the third part of the package, and you look at verse number 46. Nathanael said unto him, Can there any good thing come out of Nazareth? Philip said unto him, What? Come and see. Come and see. Yeah. So Jesus finds us. He says, Follow me. And then when we follow him through belief and obedience and sacrifice and persecution and loving him, then we go out to others and say, come and see. That's the Great Commission, isn't it? That's, that's his formula through and through. He doesn't do it any other way. Never has, never will. What a beautiful thing. He, he promised another comforter. You see, the Holy Spirit has the same call as his earthly ministry has. The Holy Spirit calls, he finds us, he says, follow me, and then he compels us to tell people to come and see. Come and see this Jesus. Come and see. Come and see. Jesus' is call. It's a call. It's a call to believe in him. It's a call to trust him. It's a call to follow him. It's a call to leave the earthly, worldly things of your day in second place, putting him First, it's that kind of a call. It's a call to, to be in friendship with him. It's a call to love him. And when you love somebody, you always put them first. That's how we show love, by putting them first. It's impossible to show my love for my wife if I put myself first. It's impossible. He wants us to exercise great spiritual and physical discipline where he's concerned. And he wants to promise us high, high rewards. Amen, church? High rewards. And my question is, is Jesus loving on you? Do you feel like Jesus is loving on you? Do you really feel that way? Do you feel like this comforter is just loving on you uh, uh, via the Holy Spirit? Now, he loves all, but is he loving on you? That's a different thing. That's a different thing. Uh, I'll ask you to stay there and mark your spot in John, but would you go over to Revelation 2 with me? Revelation 2. Now, I appreciate what Brother Harold was saying in Sunday school about his remarks about my wife's testimony last Sunday night uh, or whenever it was during our testimony time, uh, Sunday morning, Sunday night. <clears throat> but um, we could have all kind of nice things to really, really make this place look probably second to none. But 
We need to love on the Lord. And, and, and that's how, what we need to do. And we see here in this church here, the church at Ephesus. Now, the church at Ephesus, I truly believe that we, when we look at Revelation chapter number 2, I believe, and I've said this many a times, that there was not a lost person in that church. Everybody there was saved. Why do I believe that? Because he said all they needed was an ear. He who hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the, the churches. He had to change that around later on. He had to put he who overcometh first. He didn't have to do that at the church of Ephesus. So with all those good saved people at the church of Ephesus, so I, want you, I want us to note something though. I want us to note something because this is easy for us to slip away from. In verse 2 he says, I know thy works. They were working for him. The New Testament Baptist church is working for him. And thy labor, they're having la we labor for him here. And patience, and how thou cannot bear them which are evil. I've listened to more talk, of more disdain of government corruption and evil just this morning in church than I heard on the news all week long. Right. So I know folks here have a great disdain for that, and it almost dictates their day. Don't worry about that garbage. <clears throat> and thou hast tried them which say they are apostles and are not, and has found them liars, and has borne, has had patience, and for my name's sake has labored and has not fainted. Those are all great things. The Lord's praising him. He knows that. Those are all great, great attributes. But in verse number four, he says, but nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee because thou has left thy first. Who is that? It's the Lord Jesus Christ. They got, they're all preoccupied and doing all this, but they're not loving on Jesus. They're working for him. They're serving him, but they're not loving on him. He wants to be loved on. He wants to be loved on. How do you love on somebody? You put them first. Isn't that what he said? Thou hast left thy first love. First love. That's a tough thing when you're a young kid and you get married to your bride. Isn't it, guys? It's like you're not that spiritually mature. I don't love anybody more than I love my wife. I do now. Amen. I do now. She took second place. <laughs> <laughs> She'll hit me for it in the car. She will. It'll, be, it'll be spousal abuse. All the way home. All the way home. Listen. Jesus, our Lord and, and Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, we know John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes him should not perish but have everlasting life. That's a love. That's a love. He gave Jesus for me. Amen. That's a love. I won't give any of my children for any of you. And I love you. But I can't do it. And I don't think you can do it either. Even on their worst days. <laughs> you see, it's a father's love, isn't it? Yep. It's a mama's love. Jesus finds us and he says, follow me. Then we say, come and see. Come and see. We take all this love out of the church and we spread it around the world. That's what we're to do. He gave us another comforter to be with us forever, to dwell within us and with us forever. You know, if we love on him as we face this new year of 2023, then we need to accept by faith the presence of the comforter. By faith. Not by lip service, but truly 
by faith. By faith. The presence of this comforter who came to love on us the day we answered the call to accept Christ as our Savior. You know, 1 Corinthians 3.16, I'm not going to turn there, but if you're taking notes, you can write it down. It tells you that this comforter lives within us. Amen. Within us. And we need to walk in that strength of that loving faith. We need to know that he is with us each and every step we take. And in order to walk in faith, we have to know that we're trusting him and not our own footsteps. And that we're not trusting our own eyesight and our own ears, but we are trusting him. What did Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego do? They didn't give up that trust, did they? Not at all. That trust got them tossed into a fiery furnace, didn't it? Your trust, my trust, is going to get us tossed into a fiery furnace on this earth and this life. So don't, don't go out of here today thinking this world's going to wax better. No. Uh, no, it's not. It's going to wax worse and worse. And we're going to be under greater persecution. And you know what? We're going to be invincible Amen. until God says so. That's, right. That's faith. That's walking in faith. Lord, you're not, the world's not going to stop me from spreading the gospel wherever. You say, well, they got guns and knives over there. So? So do I. Walk in faith. Amen. So with love for the Savior and his people, let us cooperate with the Comforter and the Counselor as we enter the, this new year of 2023. Christ before me in 2023. Brother Adolf's going to come. We're going to lead us in a closing hymn. If you've come this very first Sunday of the year without knowing Christ as your Savior, this would be the time to hear that call saying, follow me. Be a time to let Jesus into your heart. It'd be a time to rededicate your life and start telling people, come see. Come and see. Come and see. Let him be your Savior. Let him be your Lord. Let him be your teacher. Let him be your friend. Love on him and watch that he doesn't love on you back. Because he certainly, most certainly will. Whatever your need is, you come to this altar call, the invitations for all. If you need somebody to pray with you, we will certainly do that. So as we stand and sing. It's an old.